זהו, התחלנו. טוב, אוקיי. הלו, אבי, שלום. It's a pleasure to uh, be here in my own apartment and uh, uh, seeing all of you and uh, learning together. Uh, it's been a while since the last time and it's really a pleasure to see how this uh, uh, wonderful program is uh, continuing and uh, Limut Torah is something that uh, uh, holds us together, keeps us together, even in difficult times, and uh, uh, nothing can stop it, you know, if we have to stay home, so we'll do it through Zoom, and Bezrat Hashem, uh, very much looking forward to uh, uh, being together again in a physical Beit Midrash. Um, so, naturally, today's topic has to do with tshuva, um, as the theme for Yemei Elul, and as we're going to start saying Slichot Motzei Shabbat is the Ashkenazi custom. Um, and I would like to focus on one aspect of what uh, a, a Baal Tshuva means and what, the, what should be the focus when we are uh, doing our annual Cheshbon Nefesh and uh, uh, preparing ourselves to the Yamima Novaim. Um, and I would like to start Dafka with a uh, tshuva, in a different context of the tshuva, different meaning, tshuva of the Nodabi Yehuda. The Nodabi Yehuda, Rabbi Yechezke Landa, was asked a, uh, I would say a scary she'ela, a scary question. Uh, and, uh, um, and I would just like also to remind everybody to put themselves on mute and if you need to ask a question please uh, unmute yourselves but uh, I do hear some background noises so maybe not everybody's on mute. Um, so the, 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 the was asked the following question all right I'm gonna read we're not gonna read all the sources inside it's very difficult to uh, and it's very draining to do that on zoom um, but I will uh, focus right now on the words themselves in order to uh, uh, present the question accurately. So here is the question. Shoresh ha-she'ela, she'echad nichshal be'eshet ish kama shanim, shalosh shanim retzufot she'haya be'veita. It was this person. Uh, we will learn later on that he is also considered to be a Talmid Chacham. And he was uh, violating the Isu of Eshet Ish for three years in a row, constantly. And now he wants to repent. That he wants to repent. This is a beautiful, beautiful phrase. Nafshol is all as you know the uh, 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 lowest place on earth. Sheol, but also nafshol lishol, right? He, he asks the question, shehu ata chatan ha'isha azot, the woman with whom he was sleeping for three years, the married woman, is now becoming his mother-in-law because he is marrying his daughter, her, her daughter. Shenasa bita, imechuyav lehodia lechamiv shifrosh mishto, o shtikato yafa, ki hem anshe Hashem, v'yesh lahem banim chashuvim, etc., etc. In other words, one halachic question here is, does he have to, or must he, uh, tell the, uh, his father-in-law that Mazat of Mazat of, but by the way, I was also sleeping with your wife for three years, and I didn't want to keep that as a secret from you. Um, and as we know, the halakhic ramification of uh, 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 such piece of news is that there's going to be a divorce there, right? Um, and the second thing that he's asking for, and this is what we are we are going to uh, talk about today. וגם שאל לסדר לו תשובה לאיש הזה על פי כוחו, כי הוא אדם חלוש מאוד ומתמיד בתורה הרבה. He's also asking uh, for, uh, I would say like a uh, formula or recipe for what should he do in order to repent. And we're talking about here about the, uh, uh, what they used to call tshuvat hamishkal, like you have to do something physical in order to repent, right? You have to suffer physically, you have to inflict yourself so you can actually feel that you're a chozer b'tshuva. Now the Nodav Yudah, I'm not gonna go into uh, all of that right now, but the Nodav Yudah is 
strongly, strongly against this whole concept of uh, uh, those physical things in the process of tshuva. And he writes how much he doesn't, how he doesn't like it, and, and there's no source for it, and so on and so on. However, he says, well, um, I can't, I can't, uh, since the, the sin is so severe here, the Avera is so severe, so I cannot ignore that, and I have to give him something, a little bit of what they call Tshuvat uh, HaMishkan, uh, all right? So he starts with a few uh, uh, fast days that he has to accept. We'll see in a second. And he comments that he was told that this person is about Tshuva, he's a Tamid Chacham. He learns Torah very seriously, but he's also very weak. So he doesn't want to go hard on him. All right? So here we go. Even though I'm going to go easy on him, so what should this person do in order to repent, to be a Baal Tshuva? So the first thing is, The first thing is, he needs to learn Torah seriously, and a lot of it, right? Right? He should learn Torah. Basically, what he's saying here in this paragraph, he should learn serious Torah and not Hasidut. This is what he's going to say. But if you learn Torah and you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. 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 In the eyes of the Lord of Yehuda, it was a very, very big misnagat. All right. And then he continues and says the following about fasting. Since this person is very weak and he's learning a lot of Torah, so on, let's say in August, when it's very hot, so he shouldn't fast so much, but too often, he should fast only on Erev Rosh Chodesh. But Sh'al Yemei HaKaitz, so in the rest of the summer days, he should fast at least one day a week, except for Elul. Uh, well, during Elul, he should fast twice or three times a week, and then during the Tshuva, he should fast every day. And during the winter time, when it's easier, so from the beginning of Cheshvan until the Rosh Chodesh Nisan, you should fast every week three days, and one of those three days should be a full day, meaning night and day, like Tisha B'Av, like Yom Kippur. Kacha yitnaheg shalosh anim retzufot. This is how we should do for shalosh anim retzufot. Maybe this is why they used to call it Shuvat HaMishkal, right? Because if you do that for three years in a row, so your mishkal is going to be different than the mishkal you had when you started. And anyway, uh, etc. And if you do tikkun uh, chatzot, and he learns, he says, Tehillim learns Torah, he can fast a little less. So you should fast only twice a week during the winter days. Again, this is going easy on this guy. All right? Then he continues. Yeter sigufim, what kind of inflictions, if I skill my alatoshe, no shochev al mitak lav. This guy doesn't sleep on a bed. So that's great. In addition, yalchik mishok, shelo yishok shalosh anim alalu, should not do things that makes him happy, should not laugh, should not have all kinds of uh, 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 entertainment, right? Shelo yimale pivu lasimcha, mazor yasa, vui tabel alavono, he should... Uh, uh, mourn for his situation. And then something that probably we would write at the beginning, lo yistakel benashim, ve'yeshach enayim, right? After being with Eshet Ish for, sh- ish for shalosh anim, for three years, so that should be the first thing. Kol shalosh anim alalu, for the first three years, should not drink wine, should not drink any other alcohol, nothing that makes him warm, except for tea with a little, with, with the sugar, and sometimes a little coffee. And all of that does not include his uh, Leil HaOna when he's with his wife because she doesn't have to suffer from this. And then, 
אחר כלות שלוש שנים ראשונות, after those three years, for the next three years, he should fast during the winter, every שני וחמישי, and during the summer, like the first three years, as we said, at least one day a week. And during the second group of three years, he should, where he's allowed to, to lie on a bed. And then after six years from when he's starting to repent, Shuv kol yamei chaya for the rest of his life, yit'ane bechol choref bechol shavua yom echad, once a week during the winter days, in the winter time, uvakait erev rosh chodesh, erev rosh chodesh during summertime, he should fast, לקיים וחטאתי נגדי תמיד, ובעשרת ימי תשובה I should fast every day. So thank God that Adon Abiyuda says he's going easy on him, he's not going to go hard on him, right? This is, this is a recipe, for sure it's a great diet, right? This is תשובת המשקל, but it's, it's a recipe for a very specific type of תשובה. Because when you think about it, this person will not be able at, at any point of his life from now on to forget about this, to say to himself, this is behind me. I moved forward. This is something that he has to continue and remember for the rest of his life. Every week he's going to fast because he had sinned with Eshet Ish. And because he, 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 he was so, so uh, distant from the Rebbe Shalom and he did such a horrible Avera, there's nothing he can do in order to uh, fully repent. This is how it seems from here. The thing is that, um, that this kind of tshuva may cause someone to, to lose hope and to feel that he cannot really repent. What's the use in doing the tshuva if for the rest of my life I have to feel like this? And this is basically a machlok at the most of the night. Let's look at the following Gemara that deals with the mitzvah of vidui on Yom Kippur. I want to say one word of introduction. We, usually when we speak about vidui, we think about the vidui that is printed in the machzor because, because this is what we are saying. Right? There is the vidui, ashamnu uh, bagadnu, and then we have all the alchets, right? Alchet, chatanu lefanecha, and there's a long list that we are uh, uh, saying every year. But when the Mishnah hero, when the Rabbanan uh, and the Brighta, when they speak about vidui, they mean a very genuine vidui. A vidui that someone sits down and writes down his transgressions that he needs to confess, confess for. For Yom Kippur. A vidui is not a text. It's not like Psukhe de Zimra, that you say Psukhe de Zimra and you praise the Rabbana Shalom. It's not like, like Shmone Esra, that everybody should say the same words. Vidui, when you think about it, is the our act of tshuva in front of the Almighty, and that the way we should do it, there's no reason to assume that my vidui is going to be the same vidui as my neighbor's. Because he's far worse than I am. No, just kidding. But uh, uh, um, it's because we're different people and we have different weaknesses and we give different aveyas, right? So the true vidu, and I think there's something to think about before we go to show and young people is a video that we sat with the master before and found a way to insert in there um, our own. That's a real vidu. Otherwise, it creates situations that are very, they sometimes are funny, you know, I still remember as a Talmud Chanal in Yeshiva that my uh, Ram's son was standing next to me, and he was very young, he was in his, I think he was nine years old, ten years old, and he was saying Fidu very seriously on Yom Kippur, and he's crying, and he says, and I think to myself, oh my God, he's ten years old, like, well, what did he do? Right? So, so, so that's something that can happen. It becomes artificial. So with that in mind, when we are talking about the real vidu, all right? Uh, 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 so let's see what the Gemara is saying here. Tanu Rabban, Averot yitvadalem Yom Kippurim ze. So transgressions that you already confessed for on the, this Yom Kippur, lo yitvadal lehem Yom Kippurim achel. So you don't have to confess again for them in the next Yom Kippur because you repented. 
צריך להתוודות יום כיפור פעם אחרת. אבל אם הוא מפיד את זה, obviously, you need to uh, repent. Uh, we're pretty much familiar, I think, with this halacha. Halacha. Now, ואם לא שנה בהם, but if he did not do it again, וחזר והתוודה עליהם, nevertheless, he decided in his video in the following year, he says, אל חד שחתנו לפניך last year when I did this, this, this and that. עליו הכתוב אומר, כחלב שב על כאור, על כאור כסיל שונה באיוולתו. It's just like a dog that deals with his own, you know, vomit and then... He shouldn't be doing that. Why is he doing that? He's not going to be doing that. However, Rabbi Lezo ben Yankov אומר, כל שכן שהוא משובח, שנאמר, כי פשי אני אדע וחטאתי נגדי תמיד. רבי אליעזר בן יעקב says, Oh, on the contrary, you should continue and confess every year for since you did in the past. Every Yom Kippur you should be standing there and do vidui, you know, for your entire record. Remember everything and remind HaKadosh Baruch Hu and yourself of everything. Now, This is a little difficult with this uh, 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 platform using Zoom, but normally I would ask you which opinion you identify with and why. All right? Uh, you know what? Let, let's, let's try that. If anyone wants to uh, uh, release himself from the mute for a second and tell me which opinion you identify with. Is it the first one that says, don't go back, don't, don't confess again for things you, you confessed in the past and you repented from? Or... Do you identify more with the opinion of Rabbi Lezo ben Yaakov that says, oh, you should? Yes. That, um, if, you, if you go over and over what you've done in the past that you've already repented for, that's psychologically probably unhealthy. You're, you're wearing yourself down. And if you've done a real tshuva, then you're a different person. And those actually aren't your averas anymore. And so now you should just be um, uh, intensifying your thoughts on, on what you did recently and that you would do differently going forward. Okay, thank you very much. M- meaning, uh, psychologically, and this is probably what Tanakama believes, is that this is, this, this is not healthy. This can really discourage you from doing tshuva. You're wearing yourself down, as you said. Uh, and you should focus on something else. You're a different person. That's the common concept of what tshuva is. So what does Rabbi Lezo ben Yaakov fix? Doesn't he believe that this is dangerous? Doesn't he believe that this might uh, uh, cause a psychological crisis to this person? We have to try and understand What did he believe when he said, on the contrary, it's Meshubach, not only you're allowed to, you should. And I would suggest that Rabbi Lezo ben Yaakov believes that, you know, once you had sinned, there's nothing you can do about it. Objectively, it's out there. It's true that you can repent and maybe get away from punishment. But objectively, whatever you did, It's part of your record. It's there. Think about it for a second. When you have chas v'shalom, when you have a fight with someone, and you say something you, should have, you shouldn't have say, said, and then you go and you, you, you make up and, you, and, and there's shalom between, between you. You can't go back and erase those words. It was said. When you lie to someone, It's very difficult to gain trust again. Why? Because even if you promise from now on, well, you lied. It's there. We feel it a lot, I think, with our children. You know, when, when you know, um, I believe all of you were perfect parents, but uh, 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 I'm not. And I find myself sometimes regret things that I said to my children or a way that I reacted to things that they did. Um, But there's nothing you can do about it. You can't go back. You can't just like rewind. You can't go back and say, let's do it again. Let's do it better this time. The whole concept of tshuva is very challenging when you think about this for a moment. I remember when I was younger, I was volunteering in a jail. And I remember sitting and learning with a, uh, a person with glowing bright eyes, a big kippah, a very long beard, And he was a murderer that was serving 
uh, life. And that was, uh, and he was a true Baal Tshuva. He was a true Baal Tshuva. He, I have to tell you, he was an inspiring person. But he was very much broken in spirit because he said, it doesn't matter whatever I do from now on, there's nothing I can change. I am a murderer. There's a book I always tell my Talmudim that they must read at least twice in their lives and not just set up for the musical, and that's Aluvei uh, HaChaim, right? Le uh, Miserable, right? I say with the story of Jean Valjean that holds himself accountable for stealing a coin from Petit Gerbet, the kid. You don't see that in the musical. You really have to read the book for that. Uh, but, but he always thought of himself as a person who is... Um, he has a record that is not clean. This is why he was humble. Uh, it's, I think this is what Rabbi Lezo Ben Yaakov is saying. You should always focus on your past because once you committed a sin, you should realize that you're not perfect. This is who you are. And a real Baal Tshuva is someone who remembers that, especially on Yom Kippur, all the time. And true, there, are, there is a danger here that this will discourage you. This will break you down. Right. It may cause you psychological damage. Maybe. But you can't avoid it. It seems that this is the machloket here between Tanakama and Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov. But Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov says, focus on your past. While Tanakama is saying, well, you should leave your past behind once you repented properly and move on. Let's look at another machloket for a second. Can I make right. a comment? Of course. Okay, Rabbi, so there's just two, two things. I think, according to Rabbi Eliezer, number one, the people's, many people's memories are very, very deep. And you cannot forget a mistake, even if it happened many, many years or decades in the past. It's still, in some people's consciousness, very significant and that they must be on guard not to make that mistake again. And number two is that there are, that a particular tendency in an individual might have caused them to make a mistake or sin years in the past, but they still may have that tendency, which may, which may be manifested in a different type of mistake or error uh, currently, and it still stems from the same type of tendency. So I think that those are two elements that might that may justify or give credence to this approach that he's using uh, with regard to the issue. Thank you very much for that comment. Um, true, there is. I, I identify more with the second comment you said. The first one that you said that uh, uh, those deep memories that you can't avoid. It's true, but the question is, should you? bring them out there and put them on the table when you confess and say, this is still part of me, or do you look back at it and say, well, this was part of who I am. It's not part of who I am right now. And again, let's remember, we're talking about the video on Yom Kippur, where you say, this is what I'm asking you, Rebona Shalom, to forgive me for, but you already did it last year. But your second comment, I think, is very, is, I, really, I really strongly agree with that, that uh, probably Rabbi Lezo Ben Yaakov is saying here also that it's, uh, you, you need to be cautious. And if you, if you have the tendency, you have to remember that. And this is, uh, uh, by, by saying that, including that in your video every year, you're basically reminding yourself what you need to be aware of and careful with. Thank you. Let's look at source number six. V'tzarich lifrot et hachet. Again, we're speaking about the halakha of Vidui. Shenemar, ana chata ha'am aze chata agdola, v'yasu lahem elohei zahav, divrei rabbi Yehuda ben Bava. So Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava said, when you do confess, you need to specify the details of your sin. Just as Moshe Rabbeinu said, instead of saying, well, please forgive them for the sin, Moshe Rabbeinu says, Chatav Sulahem Elohei Zahav. Like he basically reminds, he puts everything here on the table. It's Engel Zahav, it's Avod Zara, it's everything. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Ashrei Nesui Pesha, Kesui Chata'a. It's better to be someone who hides his sins, not specifying them, not specifying them. And as we see here, there is a correlation between this machloket and the previous one. 
because we can really see how one opinion here says you should be focusing on your future. Leave your sin behind. That's Rabbi Akiva. It's just like Tanakama in the previous Machloke. Because if you will start going, and again, think about it. Uh, you know, wait a second. If, if you will go again into the details of the sin you're trying to repent from, this will bring back memories, you know, sights, smells, sounds. It may, may make you feel so bad. Maybe it will discourage you. Maybe you will not be able to repent. You will not be able to repent from it. Well, Tanakama here, Rabbi Yudah ben Bava, is identifying with Rabbi Leza ben Yaakov's shita, which is, well, this is what you've done. You have to face it and just speak about it. Put it out there. If we pause for a second, we're talking about tshuva and we're speaking about modern psychology, you know, there are different schools of psychology. You know, uh, uh, um, we have Freud, right? Uh, Psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysa, okay. Uh, um, so Freud's approach is, of course, that if I have an issue that I would like to try and solve, the key to it is in my past. I have to dig deeper into my past and find what is there that is causing me a reaction, a specific reaction or a behavior or a fear or anxiety that I have right now. But there are other approaches. Others' approach, for instance, is like, like behaviorist. Uh, sorry, Watson's uh, uh, approach, um, which is more uh, famous as CBT as the treatment, right? Uh, uh, behaviorism is don't dig deep too deep into your past. Let's think about how to cope with the situation and give you tools how to move on and how to deal with it now. And it seems that those two approaches here about shuva has something from those approaches that we just mentioned in psychology, right? One approach says, well, you want to really purify yourself, clean yourself, you have to deal with your past. And every year when you want to be Tahoe in front of the Rebona Shalom on Yom Kippur, you have to deal with who you are. While according to the other opinions, that say, just focus on the future, said, you're not that person anymore, just move on. Move on. So if to wrap up what we said so far is that we have two approaches and one is more uh, aware, and I don't want to say aware, one is more concerned of the uh, dangers of uh, focusing on your past and therefore believe that tshuva is moving on, while the other approach is saying tshuva is basically remembering and reminding yourself every year in front of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, in Vidui that you are a sinner. And the question is, what is the halacha? What should we be doing? So if we look in the Rambam here, so look, please, at source number eight, at the um, uh, first paragraph here. So Rambam says, Kol amitvadeh bedvarim velo gamar belibo lazov, arei ze dome letovel vesheretz beyado, she'ena tvila mo'elet lo ad she'ashrich ha'sheretz. Famous words of the Rambam, if you confess on young people, but you don't really mean it, you didn't really, it's just from your mouth, right? It's not from your heart. So it's just like going to the mikveh while holding on to a dead animal. It doesn't make you a uh, taho. Um, and then he goes into the details of the halachot of confession. V'tzarich lifrot et achet. You need, you must specify the sin. She'neemar ana chata amaze chata agdola ve'yasu lemelohei zahab. So in that machloket, whether you should look forward or backwards, says the Rambam, you should look backwards. You should remember all the sin very, very vividly. It should be in front of your eyes. And then he continues, Averot sheitvada alem beyom ha-kippurim ze, chozer umitvada alem beyom kippurim acher, af al pi shu omed betshuvato. Shenema, kipshayin ayada vechatati negdi tamid. In other words, even here too, the Rambam is paskin that you have to repeat the vidu every year again and again for everything you've done in the past. So just think about it for a second. If you committed something, either you cheated on a test when you were 15, and now you're on your 119th year, right? You still have to confess for that test when you were 15 years old. And every year you have to do that. 
a very long video probably for right? But every year. Now, what kind of a Baal Tshuva does this create? It creates a Baal Tshuva who is probably broken in spirit. It creates a Baal Tshuva that pays that uh, uh, psychological price, very, very deep and heavy price that was mentioned before. We used to think about Balachuva as people who are, you know, happy and they feel, you know, and so on and so on. But this kind of a Balachuva, it seems that is someone who it doesn't feel like a new person. On the contrary, it just deepens that notion of I am a sinner. And here I am 80 years later, but uh -huh. I can't fool the Ribbon Shalom. I am the same person who 80 years ago did this, this, and that. What did I do? What have I done back then? Oh, I have to actually specify all the details. Like it has to be alive when I do the video in front of my eyes. It's very difficult. It's very discouraging. Very discouraging. Now, as we know, the Rambam wrote many, the Rambam had many works. Of course, the most important work of the Rambam is the Mishneh Torah, the Yad HaChazaka. The Rambam also has the Moren Nevuchim, Guide for the uh, Perplexed. And in the uh, third uh, volume, chapter, not chapter, like a part of the Moren uh, Nevuchim, uh, so he explains uh, his the way he categorized the mitzvot, which basically we see a manifestation of that in the Yad HaChazaka. And he has a paragraph in which he speaks about the fundamental mitzvot. What are the, the yesodot, yesodei ha-Torah, right? Yesodei ha-Torah. Um, there used to be a yeshiva, a one-year program here for uh, uh, American uh, students. Uh, it used to be yeshiva yesodei ha-Torah. Used to be in uh, uh, San Simon, I think. So I used to joke that uh, you know, if you, if you already have to choose a name for your yeshiva from the halachot of the Rambam, right? Uh, Yisodei Torah probably is the first, you know, it's the first halachot of the Rambam. So you, this is why they chose the name. But if you really want to be more attractive, maybe you should name your uh, yeshiva Mahalot Asurot or something like that. You get more talmidim. But anyhow, um, Yisodei Torah, the Rambam explains what are the fundam fundamental mitzvot. He says, the Kvutsa Harishona kolelet ha mitzvot shem ashkafot yisodiyot vehem asher meninum bilchot yisodiyat Torah. Ufashutu, obviously, ki gama tshuva min ha-kvutsa hazot. Tshuva is also one of the fundamental mitzvot, fundamental principles of what Yahadut is. And why is that? And the Rambam is saying here something, that I think the, 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 the older you get, the more you, you identify with it, the more it touches you. It says, one of the hashkafot, asher lo tehes dira metziut ishe ha-toratiyim kiim b'svirata. You can't really be a, a religious Jew without believing in all your heart, with all of your heart in tshuva. Why is that? Lefi she'i efshar le'adam she'lo yechta ve'it'eh. It's impossible for a person to not sin, to not make a mistake. And we all sin, for various reasons, says the Rambam. Sometimes it comes from a wrong understanding or a wrong philosophy or a, a, a wrong evaluation of what really matters in life. And sometimes it's not from a philosophical place. It's just because we can't control our anger or our desires. Now, once that happens, if a person will not will think that there's nothing you can do in order to fix what you've done, to, to better your ways, if it's one strike and you're out, so he will not repent. He will continue with that problem, with that issue. And he will... Maybe it will even cause him to be more rebellious because he said, well, if I violated Shabbos once and I cannot go back and fix that, so what's the use in keeping Shabbos? What's the use in keeping kosher? What's it? I will just leave it all behind and do whatever I want. But if you believe 
that there is tshuva, יחזור למוטב, וישוב למצב מתוקן יותר וליותר שלם ממה שהיה קודם שיחטא. He's going to be even a better person than he was before, because now he's more aware of his weaknesses and he can overcome it. And therefore, לפיכך, רבו המעשים המחזקים את ההשקפה הנכונה הזו המועילה מאוד. There are many mitzvot that are involved with תשובה. כלומר, הבידויים והקורבנות על השגגות, וכן גם על זדון מקצת העברות והתעניות. This one, we have קורבנות when you see, and you have פידו, you have סמיכה, all of that. And now, please pay close attention to what the Rambam is saying right now. והציווי הכללי לשוב מכל חטא, the essence of what תשובה is all about, he ha hitnat kot mimeno. It's disconnecting yourself from the sin. Vezo tachlita hashkafa hazo. And that's also the goal and the ultimate purpose of tshuva. Ha hitnat kot mim hachet. Now, if we have in mind what the Rambam was saying before in the halachot, that every year again and again you have to go back and confess for everything you did in your life in details. So it seems that there is a contradiction here. Now it's true that, you know, in the yeshiva world, it's not really a contradiction. You can't really say there's a contradiction between the Mogan, the Vuchim, and the, um, and the uh, um, Mishneh Torah. All right. However, however, it is a uh, uh, it is a conceptual it's a conceptual um, no it's a uh, uh, yeah contradiction contradiction a contradiction. Thank you. So, how do we solve this? So here, this I've learned from one of my rabbis in the yeshiva many years ago, that we have to distinguish between two things that so far we were identifying with each other. Let's look at the Rambam, Hilchot Shuva, Perek Bet. I'm gonna share a different screen with you, this one. It says the Rambam, Mai HaTshuva, Ushiyazov HaChotech O, ויסירו ממחשבתו, ויגמור בליבו שלא יעשרו עוד, שנאמר, יעזוב רשע דרכו. So what is tshuva? Leave your sin, stop thinking about it, make, promise to yourself that you will never go back to do that. This goes very well with the more nebuchim. And then he says, וכן יתנחם על שעבר. שנאמר כי אחרי שובי ניחמתי. What's יתנחם על שעבר? הלכתי, how do you do יתנחם על שעבר? How do you address your past? That is what we call וידוי. In other words, the Rambam separates, distinguishes between what תשובה is and what וידוי is. וידוי is the closing act, manifest. Okay, that manifests your tshuva, this, that manifests your tshuva, that really, right, that really uh, 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 closes that process, but you don't start with it. You don't begin with uh, uh, diving into your past and dealing with it. What do you do? How do you begin your tshuva? By leaving it behind and moving forward. This is what tshuva is about. And if you do it that way, it really, it really uh, um, deals with all those concerns that we had with that opinion that says that you have to deal with your past because we were concerned that it's going to discourage you. This is going to uh, break you from inside. It's going to cause you to think that, you know, there's no use because even though I will repent, I have to, I have to remind myself how bad I am and, and, and I'm a failure. Says the Rambam, no, that's not what tshuva is. Tshuva is, first of all, start by doing the right thing. Don't deal with what you did wrong. You know what you did wrong. So now start doing it right. 
stop doing what you did wrong, start doing what's right and move forward. This way you gain confidence. You really believe that you can change. Let's look at the words of Rav Kook, who is following the Rambam here, saying it beautifully. Says Rav Kook, Yesod ha-tshuva tzarich le'olam liyot munach al-tikun shelehaba. When you do tshuva, start with fixing it, doing the right thing, look towards the future. What kind of a person do you want to become? Not what kind of a person you were in the past. Uvitchila, in the beginning, don't deal with your past so much. Why is that? If you will start with doing that, you're going to find so many obstacles. And you will feel that you cannot really complete your tshuva. You cannot get closer with the if you'll start with doing the right thing, it's going to be easier for you, and the Kodesh Boch is going to help you also to deal with your past. Now, what is this formula that the Rambam is giving us, and Rav Kook phrased so beautifully? There are two ways to get to Yom Kippur. Why? One way is to get to Yom Kippur and find ourselves, find ourselves as we usually find ourselves, with... Oh my God, it's Yom Kippur. Here I am again with the Rebona Shalolam. He knows everything about me. I know. I'm with my back against the wall. Chatanu, Ashamnu, Bagadnu, Alchet, Velchet. And I even know in the back of my mind that this is going to be the situation next year also. And it breaks you. And it breaks you. It makes you feel that you're in this magic circle that you cannot get out of, cannot break. But there is a different way of getting to Yom Kippur, and that's after doing tshuva. The tshuva doesn't start on Yom Kippur. The tshuva ends on Yom Kippur. Because Yom Kippur is the day in which we do the vidui, which is the last stage of the tshuva. But think about it, if we started on Rosh Chodesh Elul, so for 40 days we did tshuva, which means, as we learned in the Rambam, that we are doing the right thing. So when I get to Yom Kippur, I'm not a person that says, here I am, a failure again. No, I'm saying here I am after I have proven to myself that I can be different. I am different. Here I am after I already gained some mileage on a new road. And now I can safely look back and say, oh, I used to be that person. When I do the vidui every year and, and, and go back to those sins and those transgressions and mistakes, I'm not doing it as a person who is still in that situation. I'm doing it as a person who really proved to himself and in front of the Ribbono Shalolam that he can be different, that he can be better, that he can do the right thing. And therefore, you don't have to be concerned so much about the damage that we were afraid of before, that vidu can cause you. Because vidu is something that is being done only after you took care of those concerns. How smart, how beautiful, how encouraging. And I believe that this is the message that uh, um, the Rambam is, is telling us, and I see that in the chat here, there was a question, so is there forgiveness, right? I believe that that question was asked after we spoke about Rabbi Lezer Ben Yaakov's opinion that said that you have a file and you have a record, you can never erase it. Well, there is forgiveness, but it doesn't mean that your file is different and your record is different, right? On the contrary, Dafka, because you were that person and you choose and you prove that you can do it differently, so there is forgiveness. Yes, absolutely. So I guess what I would like to uh, uh, conclude with and to uh, uh, um, wish us all that we will be really zochet to do tshuva in this manner that the Rambam is recommending us, the Rambam is telling us about, to, to do it in a smart way. It's not about inflicting ourselves. It's not about bashing ourselves and telling ourselves how bad we are. 
On the contrary, it's about proving ourselves that we can really be those people we would like to be. We can really do it better. We can really fulfill mitzvot in a better way. We can avoid avirot. We can be more kind to the people around us. We can do more chesed that we used to. It's not about a list of things that we look at and say, oh, I missed this, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. No, it's getting to Yom Kippur Be'ezrat Hashem and feeling confident and feeling closer to the Rebona Shalom. It's not a miracle that's going to happen there that Rebona Shalom is going to accept our tshuva and we're going to feel closer to him. No, we're going to feel closer to the Rebona Shalom and Yom Kippur because indeed we will be closer. Because between now and Yom Kippur, we will be focusing on doing it right. And then we'll do the video and we'll see how big of a progress we've made. And Be'ezrat Hashem, the Rebona Shalom will accept our tshuva. The Rebona Shalom will grant us all and, and uh, uh, kotev us the sefer chayim tovim, chayim shel shalom, chayim shel parnasa tova, chayim shel briut, chayim shel bitachon, lanu, ulechol ha'olam kulo. Thank you very much. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank you.